After suffering a knee injury that would ruin the career of almost any other basketball player being an ACL tear back on April 13th of 2021, my fellow foreigner, the Ontario native Jamal Murray, gazed into the future to see himself where he is today. On the verge of achieving the ultimate glory, merely six wins away from hoisting the Larry OB. The Kitchener-born killer may face the gloomy task of playing three of potentially the next four games in Los Angeles in front of an unfamiliar Hollywood crowd, but the Blue Arrow, who learned everything he knows under coach John Calipari at Kentucky, where he earned that nickname, just may be up for the task. An attempt to prove your boy D-Flow dead wrong, who predicted a LeBron 0-2 comeback, Murray has so far in this Denver LA series been a stone-cold assassin for his number one seeded Nugs. Whether it's running off the Nuggets' famous Spanulis action, pairing with Nikola Jokic to form one of, if not the NBA's most lethal one-two punches, or generally just having become the only player over the last quarter of a century to post four 20-point fourth quarters, Jamal has been certifiably a playoff killer. While he's about to face the most pressure-filled environment that he's maybe ever been in as this series shifts to LA, which says a lot considering how much pressure he's faced in the past, all signs may just point to this Canadian kid getting past the torch. Stay tuned to see why Murray's return to full form has been inspirational, how he's received nothing but disrespect as opposed to expectedly the opposite, and how he just massacred the Lakers for 23 points in the fourth. Right quick, just 13% of you watching are subscribed, so if more of you were, we'd hit 100k subs. Can't thank you enough for any bit of support. So while Nikola Jokic impressively just posted his 13th career triple-double, nothing was more instrumental on the Nuggets taking a commanding 2-0 series advantage in these Western Conference Finals than the Blue Arrow turning up his game when it mattered the ultimate most. Resembling a new age hybrid of Stephen Curry and Kobe Bryant, whether it was pulling up for seemingly impossible contested double clutch jumpers in the lane, like the Black Mamba, or running off Zoom's actions leading to on-ball screens before getting an inch of space and letting fly of deep-range bombs like the Chef, everything was clicking for the Canadian. After getting Davis switched onto him, knowing AD's gassed in the fourth quarter with the altitude advantage, first he goes between the legs cross left, drifting back Hezzy dribble with his left, fakes the take with a drive entry Hezzy and moving jab step, before transitioning into a space-creating step back with AD late to close out. He bounced it, he bounced it, he bounced again, he bounced real quick. Feel free to jump in. He bounced again. Next, he gets Hachimura switched onto him and asks LeBron if he can have this dance with another between the legs cross left, before this time going right into his shooting motion. Then it's the Nuggets patented spinulis action where he starts in the paint and cuts up through the lane, sets a back screen for Gordon before receiving the handoff from Joker, and he hits yet another three right in LeBron's grill. How about more in-between game magic as he transitions to the post, then quickly transitions out of the post, Reeves is forced to help with LeBron sagging off, and he drains it in Austin's grill from the elbow. While no one would have believed him when he was sitting on his couch last year watching the Nuggets get handled by the Warriors in round one while nursing his ACL tear, just over 12 months later, now Murray's getting it done in front of a top play-by-play -play announcer and Mike Green on the very biggest stage. Murray would say post-game, quote, You see your fam in the crowd, you see your little brother, you see Mike Breen there, end quote. Honoring the legendary broadcaster with style points, Murray would call his own bang by pointing to the legendary Breen, defining a performance where he utterly rose to the occasion by embracing the pressure of having every eye squared directly on him. Having witnessed the stage presence that Murray's displayed ever since he stepped onto the playoff scene back in the bubble, while I predicted the Lakers would ultimately come back to win this series and then go on to win the NBA title, with such a shot-creating phenom who's built for the modern game like Murray on their side, I'm willing to rock with whatever narrative comes to fruition, whether it's the Kitchener-born native in Murray's or the Toronto-born native in D-Flow's. Either way, the two foreigners are putting on masterclasses in these playoffs. In all seriousness, it's been an honor getting to witness a man who grew up in the same province as I did absolutely light up the world by destroying my Lakers narrative. Improvising as he should be, and having no choice but to go off script just like Jimmy Butler has for Miami, Jamal's displaying that his killer instinct is built for dramatic pressure-filled stages like the NBA playoffs. 
While LeBron has been called out by his infamous hater who made a living off trash talking him and Skip Bayless for not having the clutch gene again, <sighs> LeBron James, no clutch gene. If such thing as a clutch gene really exists, which I'm of the mindset that it does, then Murray has that and then some. You can't forget about this man's all-time duel with Donovan Mitchell back in the bubble, where in the first round of the 2020 playoffs, he averaged 32 points, 6 dimes, and 6 rebounds per game on a ridiculous shooting split of 55-53-92. Amidst a series where those 32 points per night came on a 68% true shooting mark, Murray pulled off one of the greatest layups of all time and hit daggers one after the next that seemingly displayed to everyone that he was next up. But with the bubble guppy rumors being spread across the league, with people saying that no fans in attendance allowed him an easy pass to do what he did, now Murray's getting to prove to everyone that he was made for this stage the whole time. Murray would speak on the lack of respect he's received since that Disneyland showing, given the fact that he's earned the disrespectful nickname of Bubble Murray, saying after this most recent beastly showing in Game 2, I don't think I get enough respect as I should be. I'm better than a lot of players in the league. Every time I see rankings of guys, I think, man, that's crazy. Maybe it's because I've been out for so long, but if we win the chip, it changes everything." End quote. If Jamal can maintain the evident, sharply polished edge in terms of his mentality that he evidently competes with night in, night out, there may be no stopping Denver this year. This kid is an absolute flamethrower. This kid is the Blue Arrow.